Hi guys! In this tutorial, I will show you five common mistakes what beginners usually tend to do when they start to learn the handstands. And of course, I'll give you five tips how you can avoid these mistakes. So let's get started. The first mistake that I usually see is this. Second mistake what I usually see, now look at my shoulders, what I'm doing with my arms. Third mistake, now again, look at the placement of my hands. Fourth mistake, try to pay attention to my fingers. And the fifth mistake, Let's try to break down each mistake and understand what we can do to improve these little things that actually really do matter. The first mistake would usually is the jump, the kick and swing up. Either you're doing the jump with both legs tucked or you're swinging one leg and jumping with another leg. Usually the mistake looks like this when you're trying to jump like this. Even though if you're kind of swinging the leg, it still doesn't swing you up. And it seems like the paw is light years away from you. That is because the swing has to actually be the swing and the kick and push off from the foot that is actually doing the jump has to actually be a jump. So, one important detail is to actually swing the leg. The swinging leg has to be straight. If you're swinging a leg, you have to straighten it. If the leg is straight, it connects to your hips, hips connect to your glutes, and glutes connect to your core. And it's easier to swing this whole piece up than when you bend the leg and you're just trying to push your butt up. That's a lot harder to actually accomplish. Once you straighten the leg, You, you should feel that you're more connected with your hips and therefore you should feel more connected to your core. Next thing, you have to actually jump off to swing your body up. So the jumping leg, you have to imagine that the heel wants to touch the butt. So when your swinging leg is straight, the other leg has to bend and the more you pop it closer to your butt, actually the stronger is your push off from the floor. So you swing and try to touch the butt with your heel. And trust me, it will feel a lot easier and you will feel the pull. It's a lot closer than you think. A lot of beginners who have just started practicing their handstands, they tend to be really scared to do the handstand against the paw. And the reason is because it feels like you're gonna just fall over. So when you're swinging your legs straight, there is no other direction where you can actually go just straight to the paw. Just make sure your swing is actually straight up, not to the side. So you don't have to jump right away and touch the pole. All you need to practice a little bit is to remember that your heel wants to touch the uh, butt and your swinging leg is straight and just try to connect it as a one pole movement. And of course, the jumping leg is always slightly bent. The deeper you go, the bigger is the jump. So when you start to do this, you probably go closer to the next common mistake is that when you get up or almost you are already in your handstand position, you cannot feel the control and you just go out of the handstand, hopefully in a safe way. So that is because you do not connect in your shoulders, you do not engage your shoulder position properly. So that therefore you have to actually practice planks and downward dog position. 
but not only practice them, but also understand what we actually have to do in these positions with our upper back, with our shoulders. What is the proper engagement? Now, first of all, as one mistake was the palms, when you have to feel connected starting with your palms. When you're going into your handstand, you have to feel your full palms onto the floor. And if you're doing this with your fingers, you're making, you're lifting up your finger pillows from the floor, you are not fully connected with your palm. And so therefore, it's actually harder to engage the shoulders and the engagement starts from your fingers. So that is a common mistake, one of them what I showed you before as well. So you start with your fingers wide open and try to connect to the floor with your finger pillows. That is the first thing. When you shift the weight to forward, you have to feel that your fingers are starting to engage. And the main common issue is that when we're shifting weight forward, somehow you think that you have to lift up your finger pillows from the floor, but actually you have to push the finger pillows into the floor. Imagine you're pulling sand underneath your fingers but your finger pillows are still onto the floor and this is a very common issue that's why you have to start with planning some down dog position when you can engage these little details in a safer position so you move into your uh, position on your floor and your shoulders are your hands are shoulder wide fingers wide open and just shift the weight forward and back and try to engage your fingers. Extend, engage. Extend, engage. Now, to make you understand why we are doing this is when you are standing on your foot, full foot, normal foot, okay, and you're shifting weight forward. And not to fall, you should feel that your toes are actually engaging to hold the balance. Even if you're standing just on one leg, you're balancing with your toes. When you shift your weight even slightly forward, your toes should start working. They, sh they actually start to work kind of automatically just to hold the balance. And the same thing happens with your arms, with your hands when you place them on the floor, especially in upside down position. Because more or less, even if you're not shifting weight forward, you still have to balance with your fingers. If you're shifting way forward, they're working more. If you're going back, they're working a little bit less. But still, it's a common issue. But you should try to avoid and just practice your plank and down dog position a little bit more often to kind of get used to this position. Now, the next thing is after this, you have to actually understand how we engage our shoulders properly. There are a lot of things, a lot of Things you may have heard that you have to pull your shoulders to your ears. Some say you have to push your shoulders away. So what is the proper engagement in your handstand? Basically, what you want is slight external rotation. So you don't want your shoulder to move in. You want it to move slightly out. That's the first thing. How can you say they're moving in or out? Just check where your elbows are positioned. Your elbows should be facing back. If your elbows are moving to the side, you can see that something is going wrong. And when your elbows move to the side like this, it's actually harder to push off from the floor and that is what we need. We want to push off from the floor while engaging our upper back as well, not just shoulders. We want our upper back to work as well for shoulder stability, for more shoulder stability. So from the side when you're actually pushing off and your elbows are away, looking behind, your biceps muscles are looking to the front, slight external rotation just to engage and when you start to push, you feel that Okay, you can feel your shoulder blades now are actually trying to help you. Next thing, when you push here, now you want to slightly pull your shoulder blades together. And this is the position what you want. Push away from the floor, slightly pull your shoulder blades together to maintain a flat 
strong position in your upper back. Once your shoulder blades are connected, once your upper back is nice and flat, your shoulders are engaged and your fingers are working, you should feel a lot more stable in this position. So how to practice this? You just go on to your four wide open fingers, okay? And you just make sure you did the rotation here. You can even slightly move your fingers out if it's difficult for you to understand this position, okay? You push, you hold. You push, pull. Together a little bit your shoulder blades. Once more, you push, pull together. Slightly, not here, but slight push. Not pulling your shoulder blades here, here so your scapula moves down. You're pulling just in between your shoulder blades. That small tiny movement to make sure that you're kind of connecting the push and slight tiny tiny pull between your shoulder blades to engage that flat nice position. So once you look in the mirror and if you see your upper back is nice and flat and you feel that someone could actually sit on your upper back and you would not collapse, you're probably doing it right. So, the next mistake, what I told you to pay attention on your hands, the first thing, when you do your handstands, people tend to get scared because they don't feel they're connected in their shoulders, so the fear is to just bend one or the other shoulder and you might fall on your head, which usually is a common issue because you are not connected in your shoulders. So that mistake starts from your hands, from the proper engagement, from the push from the floor, slight engagement through your upper back, and therefore you're securing your arms not to bend while you're doing the handstand. And the next super important thing, what you maybe see saw when I showed you how, uh, the common mistakes is when you're taking hands too wide. So a common thing is that you need to take your hands in a shoulder wide position. So shoulder wide means your palms are placed right underneath your shoulders. That is a balanced position for the handstand. So therefore, you can connect with your shoulders and with your upper back. Once you take your hands a little bit wider, some other muscle groups are starting to connect. Therefore, shoulders are working a little bit less. So if you're super strong, males are usually very strong in this one, so that, therefore they may not care how wide they're taking their hands. Afterwards, you can, after you can do a handstand, you of course you can play around with different wide of the handstand, but once you're starting to learn handstand, you want the balanced, neutral position to actually engage what you need to engage, not to overwork parts of your body that does not have that does not need to be working that much. So once there is balance in each and every part of your body, you will feel a lot more safer in your handstands. Going forward, the next mistake is alignment. So all of that, what alignment means, the one you sit on your feet, for example, okay, alignment means that you have to actually work with your lower body here, with your pelvis. So you didn't, do not need to over tuck, you need to engage. So now you engage and you should see in the mirror that your back is nice and straight. You put your hands up, and just make sure your elbow or your wrist is in the same line as your shoulder. Shoulder is in the same line as your hip. So, and if you cannot put that hand far enough to make that one line, it probably means your shoulder, you need to work with your shoulder opening to secure that line. You can practice handstands without the line, of course, to make yourself stronger, but just pay attention if you have that line and work on your shoulder opening a little bit more. So, usually beginners tend to do this, and we are now compensating with our lower back. And once you will be in your handstand, because your shoulders are not open enough, so you're trying to bend an arch and open your chest in your handstand. 
You have to understand in your handstand, proper balance, normal kind of handstand, you don't need an open chest. You need open shoulders. So what they are doing usually when the shoulders are too tight is trying to compensate with the lower back. And once you will be upside down, you will not be able to balance from this position because to balance, you need to actually engage your core. And here, you are arching your lower back and it's a lot harder to engage your core and actually to work with your balance. So once more, let's put all of this together. Fingers, palms, shoulders, rotation, upper back, connection, core, engagement, and of course, when you do the jump, you need to actually swing and push off from the ground properly to get your hips up enough height so you can actually do the handstand position. So, what you actually need is alignment and a kick. So, how can we practice this? I will give you a couple of simple exercises that will help you control uh, your position and control your movement once you're learning to go upside down in your handstand position. So we will start with a plank position. I will show you firstly from the side so you can see the line because we are starting to work with our alignment actually in our plank position. If you can hold your plank and actually feel what you're doing over there, it will be tons easier to do the handstand afterwards. So we are displacing our fingers wide, our palms are right now underneath our shoulders. I'm doing the rotation, I'm pushing and pulling slightly. Next thing, to actually feel the engagement in your pelvis, you need to push off from your knees. Like push off. When you're not pushing with your feet, we tend to do this. When you start pushing off from the four balance points that you have on the floor, it actually feels tons more better and more in control. Now you have to hold this position and walk to your plank. And now even your legs are straight, you still have to engage your legs and push off to make sure your pelvis is engaging right enough not to do the over engagement in your pelvis. Common mistakes in your plank is pushing too hard, tucking too hard, and the plank position looks like this. Next common issue in planks is when you cannot hold yourself in shoulders, you fall in and your lower back tends to break in as well. So you have to start from your plank before you even start to do your handstand because being upside down is actually tons harder than doing a plank. So just simple plank position, rotation, push off, engage. From your knees, push off, slightly engage, extend, and just try to hold your plank for 10 seconds, then relax and then do it again. A couple of sets of these each day can actually help you improve your balance, improve the engagement. Once you're in the plank, you actually have to feel that it's difficult. If you're holding your plank and it feels too easy, you're doing something wrong. So it's quite enough when you hold the plank for 10, 20 seconds, rest and then go again. So it will give you a lot more awareness. You can rest and you can think about what you're doing right or wrong, or maybe you're doing everything right and everything is great, engaged and you feel mm, powerful in that position. Your neck is neutral. Neutral means that your neck is in the same line as your back. So make sure when you're, you're in your plank position, you're not looking down and you're not looking up. The engagement is that your neck should be more or less neutral. Shoulders engaged, pelvis engaged. And when you actually engage your pelvis, you feel that your glutes are connecting as well. You should feel that your glutes are connecting in your plank as your quads to actually hold the position and help balance out the load you're giving to it. So the legs are engaging as well. And the next 
super important position when you want to move towards your handstands is the downward dog position because you're in a triangle so you're getting closer to the upside down position and everything that we did in a plank actually works in the down dog position as well so you start again with your palms rotation push engage extend your legs into a plank if you can and then you try to maintain that engagement and move into your down dog position and here as well you are pushing and slightly pulling push from the floor slightly pull your shoulder blades together and your ears are between your hands and you should feel that you're pushing slightly from your legs as well if your heels do not touch the floor, your down dog position probably will start from a position on your floor. Just make sure you put your knees underneath your hip bones. Engage. Hold. Hold. And move here. Keep pushing from those legs to make sure that your pelvis is in control. Now you do not need to over tuck here so the ribs go out. You need to feel that you're engaging your pelvis and that you're in control with slightly bent knees. If you have the flexibility in your legs, in your hamstrings, in your calves, then you, of course you can start your down dog from a plank position and just move here. Pull and push. Engage your pelvis. And a nice exercise is when you're moving from your plank to your dog to make sure you feel that engagement. Do not fall down. Okay, keep your core strong all the way through. And if you can't touch the heels to the floor when you're in your down dog position, you move from here to your floor. Table position, try not to touch the floor with your knees, moving back. Now once we've got all this clear and we're ready and we feel the position what we will need to engage and hold and maintain, we can try to start to jump into our handstand. So once more we're getting back to this swing and kick. So how to practice that? What I like to give my students is just to move in your, again, position on your floor. You can go here close to pole, it will feel, it may feel a little bit more safer. Just engage when you need it to engage, like before, and walk as close as you can with your feet to your hands, as long as your flexibility allows you to straighten your back. So if you walk close and your back is like this, you have to walk further away so you feel the engagement, back is straight, your shoulders and upper back is engaged, your fingers are wet open and the pelvis engaged. And we will start to learn the jump by just trying to touch the butt with our heels. It won't happen, but you are trying to do it, okay? So you bend both legs and you're trying to touch the heels, uh, the butt with your heels. And jump here. And jump here. Do a couple of this and you should feel when you're trying to touch the butt with your heels your jump is actually higher more explosive. Next thing is to learn to land quietly and for that I suggest you to start to learn on the upper side of your foot so not to hurt your feet you will find a way how to land safely, which is stay connected in your core even when you're going down. And that will help you control your handstand when you will try to go out of your handstand position by not just switching off to a relaxed position and getting injuries because you just relax too fast. So landing on the upper side of our foot, you can jump from your toes, engage the position, and you go pa, land quietly. The harder it is, of course, to jump off 
from the center position. When you're jumping from the upper side of your foot, you need to connect more with your shoulders and your core. So the impulse comes a lot from your hips, which means your pelvis has to be connected. So to do that, you have to allow your head go down so your butt can come up. Either way, if you're jumping from your toes or from the upper side of your foot, doesn't matter. The same thing you have to do, you have to let your head actually go down and your butt come up. So you have to think about, you want to go between your hands. But, but imagine again, this hole is one piece. You do not break in your lower back. Again, jump from your toes, try to move more through, land on your upper feet. And then jump, let your head move down, and jump, and land quietly. That, this exercise can actually help you learn to jump properly, to make your jump a little bit higher. Next thing, you try to land quietly, which means you have to stay connected in your pelvis and your core. And of course, to stay connected in your pelvis and your core, you have to engage your shoulders. So the shoulder engagement is crucial not to break in any other parts in your body and lose the control. Now, we will try to put this all together. Shoulder wide, external rotation, fingers connected, push, push from the floor, engage your upper back, work with this, not to lose control in your lower back area, connect with your legs as well. One foot, the one is jumping off, is trying to touch the butt, the other one is swinging straight. So putting this all together, we just bending and boom, jump. And boom, jump. If your jump is high, when you go up, you just you try to tuck back your pelvis, maintain the line to the arch in your back, hug the pole with your feet to feel more secure. Make sure you're holding a proper line, not to lose your alignment. So that's why bending your legs can actually help you not to arch in your lower back, because it's easier when your legs bend to actually put this part of your body back into place. Once more. Walk as close as you can with your feet before the jump, okay? Engage the position in your shoulders, stay connected in your core, choose the swinging leg, move it a little bit around to actually understand from which leg it will be easier to jump off. Remember to bend slightly the lower leg, swing and touch the butt at the same time. Reach the ball, push, push, push from your shoulders and hug the ball, tuck in and push, push, push. Try to maintain the line. You can extend one foot, one leg. To try to see if you're actually getting better in your balancing. Those of you who want to jump off from both legs to a tucked position, the same thing applies. You just want to touch the butt with both heels and of course keep a proper engagement in your shoulders, rotation, walk as close as you can, bend both legs, prepare to jump and try to touch your butt. Once you reach the pole, you can extend the legs Tuck in, slight bend in the knees will actually help you control your pelvis here. And remember the safest way to get out of the handstand is the same way you went into the handstand. Either you land on your both feet, stay connected in your core, try to land quietly, and either one leg goes first, the other one is slowing you down, 
to make the exit from your handstand more safer. When you're up in your handstand, when you're going down, the other leg tries to stay up as long as possible to land safely and quietly. So I will not lie to you guys to actually get better as handstands. You have to repeat them, you have to practice them, and you have to stay consistent. And of course, planks and down dog positions helps you to progress in your handstands as well. The progression of the handstand is a lot easier when you actually do the plank. So do the planks properly, do your down dog properly. Try to stay connected with your core and with your shoulders to actually feel what you're doing over there. And the more you will practice, the more you will start to be aware of your position, what is right and what feels wrong. And of course, work on the plyometrics. Uh, the jumping and swinging can actually help you get in your handstands a lot easier if you, as well, if you practice this. So thank you guys for visiting my channel again. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Of course, if you liked it, you can like and subscribe. If you have any suggestions, uh, just leave it down in the comment section. And see you guys next time.